In the weather today, fair skies dominate the weather pattern through much of the U.S. The coastal low that affected the northeastern states heads out to sea, though parts of eastern Newfoundland are still experiencing blizzard conditions. The world's hotspot today, the mining town of Paraburdu, Australia, 115 degrees. And that's probably similar to what that looks like today. Resembles Nevada quite a bit. At the other extreme, Summit, Greenland, two miles up on the Greenland ice cap, minus 70. Let's take a look at the weather here in the U.S. We've got cold air flowing out of Canada. That's helping to support this developing snowstorm in southwestern Minnesota, which is going to track eastward through Wisconsin overnight and into Michigan tomorrow. We'll take a look at that shortly. Triple point around Omaha. And south of that, a very deep fetch of warm air coming out of the western Gulf. And with it, low clouds up the I-35 corridor, and that'll spread northward overnight into tomorrow. And yes, things are stormy out in the Pacific once again. This next weather system moving very slowly due to blocking. We're going to take a look at the upper level charts and you'll kind of see why that is so. But let's go ahead and freeze that and then we'll take a look at the surface weather picture. And it is quite active out there in the Pacific. We've got our current weather system coming onto the west coast and then we look further out to the west. This is going to have an effect on the weather coming up for this weekend and early next week in California. And checking out the Atlantic, there's that deeply wound up weather system 954 millibar low southeast of Newfoundland. That's close to where the Titanic is. Large occlusion coming back to this triple point out there in the middle of the Atlantic and looks like a rather deep warm air advection pattern set up across Spain, France, and England. Looking at a fair day across the northeastern U.S., although brisk with a cold air advection pattern in place, you can see those streamers coming in from Quebec and flowing over the northeast and offshore. And as it gets over those Gulf Stream waters, it destabilizes and produces convective elements. Some mountain wave activity across Virginia this afternoon, and we can see the track of snow on the ground from about Harrisburg, Altoona, over to Connecticut. The southeastern states looking pretty good this afternoon, not looking at any significant weather coming up until around the weekend. We'll cover that shortly. The southern plains looking at developing southerly flow as a lee side trough gets established in Colorado and New Mexico. We are advecting moisture northward, and there's a pretty substantial amount of that. The precipitable water products show about one inch around Victoria and Corpus Christi. But as we go into tomorrow, some rather stout amounts up to one and a half inches and close to two inches down there in southern Texas. And those are definitely significant because as we go into Thursday and Friday, we are approaching maximum all-time values for mid-February. We're talking about the lower Rio Grande Valley. Fortunately, it looks like a lot of that heavier moisture is going to remain out in the Gulf and transition eastward. And it looks like only Florida will be getting those effects around late Saturday into Sunday. In the short term, a developing frontal system around Sioux Falls, cold front extending like that, and warm front down into Illinois. Some rather significant precip fields showing up in the model data for this evening, and we're talking about southern Minnesota into Wisconsin. It will be moving eastward rather quickly, but those precipitation amounts will be rather intense. And I should specify that as precipitation rates because it is a fast-moving system. The precip will be very intense, but short-lived. Nevertheless, a corridor of 4 to 6 inches running through Minneapolis into northern Wisconsin. And looks like we're going to get this separate area further south along Interstate 90. 
and some of the dynamic lift associated with that southern band looks to be fairly intense. A lot of that intense lift will be associated with that advection lobe currently in Nebraska and shifting eastward into Minnesota and Iowa and into Wisconsin and the Great Lakes by early tomorrow. And this will continue to have effects as things shift eastward into the eastern Great Lakes later during the day tomorrow. And then we take a look at the Q vectors, which solves for both thermal advection and vorticity that shows some of the stronger lift developing across Minneapolis and southern Minnesota this evening and spreading across Wisconsin and intensifying as we get into tomorrow. And that's going to be a look around midday, things shifting up towards Ottawa, Montreal, and upstate New York later during the day tomorrow. Fair skies across the southwestern U.S., but here comes our next Pacific weather system. This entire region out ahead of it is part of the warm conveyor belt, and you can see a distinct increase in clouds as we go westward, not just that high cirrus, but also mid and lower cloud forms. This is a good time to get reacquainted with that surface chart. We can see that cold front entering far western Nevada, crossing through the Stockton and San Jose area. And we've got another winter storm warning in the Sierras for today. That goes from actually around Yosemite up towards Blue Canyon and Lassen Peak. We're looking for about 12 to 18 inches of snow above 6,000 with lesser amounts down to 5,000. Winter weather advisories for the eastern Sierras, basically this region right there, from Lake Tahoe down to Mono Lake and Mammoth Lakes. Could be 6 to 12 inches in that winter weather advisory. Reno not included at this time. And we've got wind advisories in the northern San Joaquin Valley today through early evening, looking for south winds up to 40 miles an hour. And we've got an even stronger system coming on Monday. We'll talk about that shortly. And for the northwestern U.S., yeah, we've got a major weather system heading into Oregon. And you can see the dry slot right there, the warm conveyor belt pretty much funneling right up towards Portland, and the cold conveyor belt just to the north. This is what we were seeing about midday today, a ridge across the Cascades, but very intense troughing further to the west. Then going into this evening, we can see the ridge push eastward into the Blue Mountains of northeastern Oregon and a series of troughs lined up along the southwestern coast. And just southwest of Portland, that's going to be the upper level low. At this time, temperatures are generally in the 30s and 40s, most of this is rain except in the higher elevations, but you can see the winter storm warning across the Cascades. And we do have a winter weather advisory in the Portland area up to Olympia. For tonight and tomorrow, we're looking for about 10 to 20 inches of snow in the Cascades, 3 to 6 inches on the lower slopes, and down in the valleys, including Portland. Those Snow levels will gradually come down, possibly as low as 500, maybe 400, 300 feet. There's the forecast snow totals going for one inch at Portland. But there are some parallels with that event back in 2017 where heavier snow occurred than was forecast. So some of the higher elevations around Portland could see considerably more snow. Then checking out Alaska and Canada. A few things going on here. If we look at the thermal pattern, the dashed blue and red lines, we see a thermal ridge extending up from the Pacific. And that's due to that maybe three or four days of southerly flow that's flowed up into Alaska and brought with it quite a bit of warm air. And that's pushed the thickness contours further north. We've got the opposite going on in central Canada cold air flowing southward, and with that, a modest 1030 millibar ridge extending from the Canadian High Arctic down towards Montana and North Dakota. On the leading edge of that, a series of fronts from western Ontario down to Nebraska, and that's going to represent a push of cold air that will flow into the central U.S. into this weekend. That push of warm air into Alaska has created this blocking pattern a cutoff high centered across Whitehorse 
and southwestern Yukon. That's a closer look at that and the polar jet rounding that ridge and flowing down into Canada, helping to transport some of that cold air southward. This is a, uh, well, earlier it was a Rex block pattern. This looks more like an Omega block, and that forms the Greek letter Omega. And that kind of keeps the long wave pattern locked up around North America and out into the Pacific. So going forward into the weekend, we can see the changes take place. A continuation of that Omega block on the West Coast, although it does translate eastward just a little bit. Deep northerly flow through the Canadian prairies into Friday and Saturday. And a Hudson Bay vortex centered on Coral Harbor. We see the cutoff high break down around Saturday. Very strong flow going into the northeastern U.S., especially on Sunday. And if we go up to 250 millibars, we see a rather strong subtropical jet, 160 knots across Texas. That comes into phase with the base of the long wave trough. You can see it bulging northward going into Friday and Saturday. And the development of this 200 knot jet across Kentucky. And there it is across Washington, D.C., for later Saturday, 200 and I think that's going to be 220 knots across the northeastern U.S. The highest that I've ever seen is 250 knots. So that is definitely coming pretty close. And of course, what everybody wants to know is what's happening in my area. And we'll go ahead and use the GFS as a guide to show us the way going into next week. And I've drawn the fronts on here for you. So going into tonight, there's that compact, intense system going into southern Wisconsin, dumping four to six inches of snow. Meanwhile, our Pacific weather system moves into the Great Basin area. Widespread snows across Idaho. And they do have the winter weather advisories and even winter storm warnings in the higher elevations in the Tetons and on up into Yellowstone Park looking for anywhere between 6 and 24 inches of snow. Further north along the interstates, the heaviest impacts will be around Bozeman and Livingston going into tomorrow. Gradually, we see things start to improve in the western U.S. as the bulk of the weather system hits the Rockies. We still have that wound up low up there in Portland and the possibility for some heavy snow in the Portland area. Then we get kind of a break going into Friday. Meanwhile, on the Great Plains, we've got this cyclogenesis taking place. And that will be tapping into that deep moisture that we talked about in South Texas. Again, the precipitable waters in South Texas will be near all-time highs for mid-February. And as we go through the day on Friday, that surface low tracks through Oklahoma into Arkansas. Gusty north winds out to the west along Interstate 40 and gusty southwest winds in Louisiana and South Texas. We can see cold thermal advection moving into the northern plains. Thicknesses down to about 500 decameters. And further out to the west, we've got deep southerly flow starting to bring the moisture back up into California once again. As we go into Friday and Saturday, that cold front bolts south through the southern U.S. and conditions get rather stormy as we get upper dynamics start to work on that very moist air mass. And you got that cold air flowing south, height falls in the mid-troposphere, and things are going to get rather grim out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Then going into Sunday, we're looking for rapid clearing as high pressure moves into the central U.S. and drives cold, dry air into the southeastern states. Another Alberta clipper coming south during the day on Sunday, reinforcing some of that cold air. Most of the snow will be concentrated in the Great Lakes region. The lake temperatures are a little bit warm for this time of year, and that will help some lake effect snows get established. Then as we go into Monday, there's our next weather system approaching California. And that will be a major event, tapping into another atmospheric river, looking for QPFs on Monday, about one inch in the valleys, two to three inches in the mountains, and one week totals could be as high as seven 
to 10 inches in the Sierras and northern coastal range. So we're looking at a return of flooding conditions once again for many parts of California. As we go into the 180-hour point, I had a lot of difficulty placing these fronts. Things got a little bit ambiguous. And typically when that happens, that's a sign that the models are starting to have problems. So I'm not really too sure what to make of the solutions as we get into late next week. It does look like it's stormy. We can see some rather extensive banding of those thickness contours. That tells me that the southern stream is continuing to be active, but the exact details are still a bit uncertain. And I'll just take you through the rest of the sequence right there. Looks stormy once again for the lower Mississippi River Valley and the eastern U.S. More cold air flowing south, but the quantity of that cold air, who really knows? We'll revisit that as we go into next week, and the models probably will capture that a little bit better. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much to our newest Patreon supporters, Chris, Jay and Kate, and Joe Somolsky. I greatly appreciate that support, and it does help keep this program going and helps me prioritize more on this project. However, please head to weathergraphics.com if you haven't seen it already. That is where I have my forecasting books. So you'll want to check that out and maybe pick up a copy. And if you already have my books, well, I've never asked this, but if you already have my books, please post which books you have and what you like about them. And a special thanks to Greg for the great footage taken in the Texas Hill Country yesterday. All right, we'll see you back here once again on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Take care. Bye-bye.